Hey guys, welcome back. Frosty Gaming here to give you another Unity tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the Input Manager, and we're going to use it to cut the length of our player controller script in half and add in other keyboard inputs for the controls that we already have. Okay, so first off, what is the Input Manager? You can get to the Input Manager by going to Edit, Project, Settings, Input. And on the right side here in the Inspector, you can see the Input Manager. Now, these things are all defaulted in, and if we open them up, you can see they've got a bunch of properties. They've got a name, descriptive negative name, negative button positive, alternative negative button and positive button, gravity, dead zone, sensitivity, snap, invert, the type, which you can choose between key, mouse button, mouse movement, or joystick axis. The axis, which has to do mostly with joysticks, and the joy number, which is for joysticks. So you can use this to set up your game with an Xbox 360 controller or a PlayStation 3 controller, any kind of controller that's supported. We're going to use this to add in the arrow keys to our movement for our player. So right now we have WASD as the movement, Q and E as turning, and space as jump. And I'm going to keep those there, but I'm also going to add in the arrow keys. And I'm going to use the input manager to make all of this much easier. So if we open up our script, we can look at the way we did this. So we're doing input.getKeyW for WASD, QE, and spacebar. Now what we want to do instead is get the button from the input manager. The way we can do that is by going back to Unity and going to the input manager. And if we look at the horizontal here, you can see the negative button and the positive button are left and right. Now these names stand for the left and right arrow key on your keyboard. And the A and D are the WASD, left and right. This is all default. I didn't add anything here. This will already be set up. And we can also look at the vertical, which is down and up the arrow keys. And the alternative buttons are S and W for the WASD. And if we go down a little bit further, there's this thing called jump, which is used the space bar. So horizontal, vertical, and jump. If we go back to our script, we can go ahead and copy and paste this. And instead of get key, since we're going to get a button from the input manager, we're going to do get button. We're going to go ahead and do the horizontal first. And we don't actually need this equals equals true. If you just do this, it will take this method and return a true or false depending on if that's the button that's been pushed or not. We can then go down here and add an input dot get axis horizontal times what we already had. Now what this does, this input dot get axis horizontal, it returns either a negative one or a positive one depending on which key, the positive or the negative key, is being pressed. So W would be the positive key and S would be the negative key. You can kind of see how this one line actually represents this line and this line then because the only difference is one is a negative and one is not. So this will automatically determine whether it's a negative one or a positive one and will already apply that. Now I can add in the same thing except this time we're going to get the vertical and we can get rid of this and then we can add in the input dot get axis for the vertical multiply it so now we have our horizontal and our vertical our WS and our AD keys but not only that since the primary positive and negative keys for horizontal and vertical are the arrow keys those will also work for the movement. So essentially what we've done is we've transformed these lines of code into these lines of code. So we can just get rid of that. Actually what we're going to want to do is change this transform.forward to transform.right because our horizontal we don't want to be moving forward and backward we want it to be moving left and right. So we could build it Go back to our scene and test it out. The WASD still works, and now the arrow keys work as well. 
Okay, another cool thing that we can do with the input manager is we can add inputs. So I can go in here, name this rotation, give it a negative button, Q, and a positive button, E. Go back to our script, take this, copy it over, change vertical to rotation, get this, change it out, and in front of time dot delta time here, we're going to add input dot get axis for rotation. This does the same thing as all these lines. So actually, you can just copy this. Now, we can build it, go back to our scene, test out the rotation. Yep, just works the same as when we first put it in. And the last thing we can do is go back and change this to get button down. Change space to jump. Get rid of the true. Get rid of this. It was something I was doing earlier. And then we've got our jump. We build it. We go back to the scene. Test out the jump. Yep. Now something that I realized before was going on with the jump is you can actually hit it over and over again and it'll go up. I know that we designed it so that when you hold down the, the space bar it doesn't keep going up, but now you can click it a bunch of times which doesn't make a whole lot of sense either. So a way we can get rid of that is by going back to the script and in this if statement we can put an and transform.position.y is less than or equal to 0.5. And the reason that we want to do this is because if we look at our cube, our player, and we look at the Y position, when it's down on the ground, it's at 0.48. So it's going to be under 5. Now if I wanted to get really strict, I could put 0.48. Now, it waits for me to land before I jump. And if we look at our script, we've actually gotten it down to 39 lines including all the brackets we can actually get rid of that as well and actually we can cut this down even more by getting rid of this function make that 32 lines of code one last time let's build and now we have our player controller alright that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it I hope you understand a little bit more about the input manager now alright I'll see you guys next time